So the question is here, a pregnant woman came to the emergency department and she complained that her water just broken down at home and she can feel umbilical cord. In that clinical situation as a RN, what you could do? What are the most important? What are the priorities? So there are four options. We have to find out what are the most important or you have to do first. First of all, let me figure out the keyword. Keyword is the mother is, is a pregnant woman. And she talk about the umbilical cord, she can feel it. Right? So this is the case where we can see the, we call it a prolapse cord, right? So if the prolapse cord, we have to keep some note in the brain. We never put the cord back inside. And also, when you go to dealing with this patient, you must wear the sterile gloves and left the presenting part of the cord or place the mom in tendled bark posture or knee chest posture. If you know this few information regarding prolapse umbilical cord, it would be easy for you to answer. Number one said, ask the client about the past prenatal care. It is important, but safe life is most priority rather than to take the past medical history. First is first. You have to do something that release the pressure of baby's neck and stop the asphyxia or increase the blood supply to the baby. So it is later on. Assess the fetal heart rate in emergency department. Definitely it is important. So if we have to check the fetal heart rate and if you know that the fetal monitoring, we have to check the fetal heart rate and it is 120 to 160 beat per minute. But it is not the priority. It is important, but not the first. Number three, perform the maneuver, the strength, the sacrum. So, Robert Menubar, it is not for this patient, not for umbilical cord prolapse. We do this Menubar for shoulder dystrophy or shoulder dystrophia. Position the client, the knee chest is the first priority. It helps the relieve the pressure. So you can see in this picture, this is the knee chest positioning, right? So when mother go this position, the umbilical cord will be relief a little bit. And also the, because of the gravity and shifting the fetus head of the uh, cord, relieving the compression. Hmm. So either knee chest positioning or we go for tendal bark posture. So let me read what they said. Prolapse occur when umbilical cord lie below the presenting part of the fetus. A lobe of cord may be uh, palpat or visualized in the uh, bath canal. 
the fetus, fetus is at the risk of occluded circulation. So if the fetus occluded the circulation, what happened? Right, it's very dangerous if fetus do, did not get enough oxygen. So the, it is the emergency condition. So an emergency cesarean section is usually required unless vaginal birth is not feel safe. Definitely the decision will make by healthcare provider. Positioning the client in the knee chest posture or Tendulkar positioning used to relieve the pressure on occluded cord. The nurse may also use the sterile gloves to help the left the presenting part of the cord. But I said, never put the cord back inside. Wear the gloves and left the presenting part of, of the cord, right? And also here we go, the hand should remain in the vagina until healthcare provider arrive. Other action include give them oxygen oxygen or intravenous fluid. So if any kind of asphyxia or oxygen supply reduce, it can provide. IV fluid can give to prevent any kind of dehydration, right? So what the educational tools here about this question? The client with prolapse umbilical cord should placed in a knee chest position or tendal bar position that relieve the pressure on the cord or in any emergency deliveries. Hmm? So if the cord compression is occurred and we call declaration, right? So, or it we call variable declaration. It is the one kind of complication as well. Question number two: The nurse is preparing nutritional teaching plan for a client who planning to become pregnant? Which food would the best prevention to neural tube defect? So this question examine, make it easy for you because mentioning best food for neural tube defect. So other name of neural tube defect is called spina bifida. So here a picture we can see, this is the spinal cord supposed to be here. The ending portion of the spinal cord is open up and bulging outside. And this bulging contain the nervous system spinal cord. It's dangerous, right? So open spina bifida or Neural tube defect, we easily prevent if we make sure mother can take enough vitamin B12 containing food or folic acid containing food. In this picture, you can see this is the vertebral column and this is the spinal cord. What it is does not fuse fuse well, the weak area, content is came out, right? And make it cyst look like this. But it can prevent it. It is preventable if 
during the pregnancy, especially the early time, mother take enough food that contain the folic acid. Here the four option, calcium rich food. Calcium is very important for mineralization of the bones and danger, but not at the beginning. Omega meat, it is also a good food, but does not rule neural tube defect. Wild salmon, good food, a good source of nutrition, but they does not play any role to prevent neural tube defect. Only fortified cereal, it contained enough folic acid that can prevent neural tube defect. So question you can ask me, is there any test we can do to find out the coming baby have any defect like this? Answer is yes. So during the second trimester, if you check the alpha fetoprotein level, you can easily distinguish the baby have it or not. So alpha fetoprotein detect the neural tube defect. If alpha fetoprotein is more than normal, the baby have a chance to develop neural tube defect or spina bifida. If alpha fetoprotein is less than normal, baby have a chance to develop with Down syndrome. Let me read why fortified food is good for this patient. So women who plan to become the mother should consume the 0.4 to 8 milligram of folic acid, right? Food option that rich in folic acid include fortified grain, example, cereal, bread, pasta, and green leafy vegetables. In inadequate maternal intake of folic acid during the critical time, first eight weeks. Hmm? Often before the women know she is pregnant, increase the risk of neural tube defect, which is inhibit the proper development of brain and spinal cord. There are several types of um, neural tube defect. The most common are spina bifida and anencephaly. So the defect in the skull of the brain of the baby lack of cerebral hemisphere, so brain is too small. The baby who born with spina bifida, the good surgeon can make it, can do the surgery and baby will be good. But the baby who born with anencephaly, they did not celebrate their first birthday. They die just after delivery. So what next? What are the educational objectives? Hmm? In this question, we learn a mother who is going to pregnant should take the folic acid, especially the first eight weeks after conceive. Uh, Hmm? And food that rich in folic acid included fortified grain product like cereal, bread, and pasta, and also 
green leafy vegetables. The question number three, which client is the prenatal clinic should the nurse assess um, first? There are four patients. Which client you will go first to check? Means who is under the danger and who is stable patient? The patient who are stable, it is not necessary to go first. So patient number one, 11 weeks gestation with backache and body weight gain. So low back pain or weight gain, both are the normal pregnancy discomfort in the early trimester. So it, it is normal sign. You do not need to go first. Patient number two, 16 weeks gestation client with hemorrhoid and sinus congestion. So hemorrhoid pain. Hmm? So hemorrhoid is the normal pregnancy discomfort in the third trimester, especially, right? So it is also the normal sign. We do not need to be worried about this. And now patient number three, a 21 weeks gestation client with blood of vision and increase the facial edema. So this is the important uh, point here. But before to explain patient number three, let me take, go for patient number four. A 32 weeks gestation client with cholesma and also frequency of urine. So frequency of urine, it is the normal pregnancy discomfort. So increase the urination, nausea, vomiting, uh, tingling sensation in the breast tissue, heartburn, pigmentation like cholesma, all are the normal sign during the pregnancies or each trimester. You do not need to go or they can stay and then go. But patient number two is the danger sign. It is important to inform the healthcare provider, reportable sign. This patient said, Blood of vision means visual disturbance. This visual disturbance, because of underlying cause, we have to find it out. Why visual disturbance? Increase the facial edema. So edema in the face, edema in the feet, edema in the hand, it is very important. It means there are some risk factor there. You have to figure it out, right? Usually the edema develop or difficulty of vision occur if the mother blood pressure not under control. We call maternal hypertension. The other terminology we use called pregnancy-induced hypertension. Because of pregnancy, hypertension occur, right? So in some book explain this one, gestational hypertension. We call pregnancy-induced hypertension. The mother, who have this problem, they have a complaint of hypertension, weight gain, and proteinuria. Proteinuria means protein present in urine, weight gain, but we, we see patient has an edema. When patient has an edema, it indicate patient is going to get excess weight 
also they complain about the headache and hyper reflexia or visual disturbance like this patient. Hmm? It is the sign of pregnancy induced hypertension. But if you do not give the treatment and pregnancy induced hypertension lead to maternal hypertension problem, especially when blood pressure is go more than 140 over 90. And some books said more than 160 over 110. So when the blood pressure figure is look like this, we called eclampsia. Hmm? An eclampsia patient present with convulsion. Convulsion means involuntary movement of muscle. It is very important to take care of them. It is very important to give them treatment. And doctor prescribed Max self, magnesium sulfate. So let me read it. Gestational hypertension referred to high blood pressure that occur as a result of pregnancy. It is considered a serious condition and can lead to potential life threatening eclampsia. Right? So before go eclampsia, the other term we use pre-eclampsia. If the pre-eclampsia is not treated, lead to eclampsia. Eclampsia present with convulsion. Gestational hypertension or blood pressure is more than 160 over 90. And some books said, I told you, Blood pressure is 160s systole and diastole is 110 millimeter of mercury with scissor, with scissor or convulsion here. We call eclampsia. So that occurred after 20 weeks of gestation. In this question, we can see the patient came to you when they are 21 weeks, right? 21 weeks, after 20 weeks. So next here, also they said um, 20 weeks gestation without protein urea. The diagnosis is changed to preeclampsia with development of proteinuria or sign of end organ dysfunction. This client should be assessed, assessed first because the client is exhibit the classic symptom of preeclampsia. The nurse should assess the client blood pressure as soon as possible and give them some medication that get that can control the blood pressure. What are the education objectives here? The nurse should assess the client who have unexplained symptoms. Hmm? Gestational hypertension refer to high blood pressure and that occur result in the pregnancies. Before to finish this question, I want to tell something. Every student must know what are the reportable danger sign. Reportable danger sign during the pregnancy are sudden vaginal bleeding or sudden severe abdominal pain or epigastric pain, visual disturbance or severe persistent headache or change in the fetal movement after quickening. Or if mother complain painful or burning urination, if mother complain edema in the face, feet and hand, or sudden rush 
of fluid means rupture of the membrane. Elevated body temperature more than 101, right? Or persistent vomiting after the first trimester. And last danger sign, if absence of fetal movement after quickening. If you see any danger sign, we must inform healthcare provider. Question number four, a client 34 weeks gestation and complain of constipation. So constipation is a normal pregnancy discomfort, especially the second trimester and sometime continue to third trimester. The client has taken 325 milligram iron Hmm? Iron for what? For anemia correction. Which recommended should nurse make the client? So the patient complain of constipation and we know constipation is a normal pregnancy discomfort. Also patient give the history, she took 325 milligram ferrous or iron last four weeks. The iron also causes the constipation, right? So if the patient have a constipation, then there are five options. Which one you recommend it to the nurse, I mean to the patient? Decrease the dairy, uh, dairy pro intake. So decreases. So first of all, everybody know that dairy product and iron is not give together because dairy product inhibit the iron absorption. So at least, at least two to three hours better to gap in between these two medication. But vitamin C, what are the NCLEX would like to ask? Vitamin C help to increase the iron absorption. Hmm? So dairy product contain the enough calcium that is important for the mother, important for the baby. So decrease the dairy product is not a good choice because they contain minerals, important component of the bones, increase fluid and vegetables intake. So the baby who born today, they also know the enough fluid or fiber containing food is good for constipation. Definitely it is the good choice. And also moderate exercise or ambulation of the patient is a good for gastrointestinal mortality, mobilities. And when movement is increased, peristalsis increase, and constipation will be go away. One laxative twice daily. So Still, mother is a pregnant. During the pregnancy, we do not tell to drink or take the laxatives because chance of develop dehydration, not good for mother, not good for the baby. Two cups of hot coffee. Definitely little bit coffee is good, but not too much. It's not a good choice. Hmm? So what their explanation? Let me read it. So constipation is a common complication of pregnancy and is due to an increase of hormone progesterone. Because during the pregnancy, estrogen and progesterone is increased. Because of progesterone, also patient develop the constipation. 
which cause decrease the gastric motility. Ferrous supplement may also cause the constipation. So how we can prevent the constipation? Like high fiber diet means good amount of fruits, vegetables, cereal, and also um, whole grain. So fiber containing food, enough fluid intakes, at least, at least two to three liter per day. Regular exercise like walking, swimming, or some yoga or aerobics. Bulk forming fiber supplement, hmm? also good, like methyl cellulose, dextrin, can help. What are the education objectives? Constipation in pregnancy may be causes to increase the progesterone level and iron supplement. It is the best treated with 10 to 20 cups of fluid daily and with high fiber diet and supplement with regular exercise. And clients should not take like the tips without first discuss with the healthcare provider. So this is the main important point we learned here. The supplement uh, lacks the tips, the chance of develop dehydration or chance of develop electrolyte imbalance is not to give in during the pregnancies.